Now, let me provide the linkage for you. Every time you see or you hear that the finance minister has released money for contractors, the money moves straight to the contractor, but the contractor doesn't keep the money. You know what he does? He places order. What does he order? He orders sand, laterite, granite, cement, iron rod. Because he doesn't keep them. How many of you have been to a quarry? You know what goes on in a quarry? Do you find quarries in the city? Where are they? So this is perhaps the biggest investment of economic activity going on in Nigeria's rural areas. People mining, people producing, people transporting. Now, all of the mined products have to be transported. So you need drivers, you need trucks, you need tires, you need lubricants. Oh, are they falling from heaven? Certainly not. Somebody is supplying them. So that value chain is moving. The granite gets to a batching plant. And labor and machine begin work. So on a project like the second Niger Bridge, it is going to require 19 million liters of diesel. So if you are a supplier, that's an economy for you. So those who come to you and say, we are going to create jobs, ask them how. What are they going to do differently? And if we have started, can they run faster than us? This was an opportunity that they missed. And we are doing so now with less the money that they had. The do dollar price of crude oil is about 50 something. At one time, it reached 140 here. Why didn't they construct these roads? They left 800 containers in the port. 800 of our containers containing power assets. So we've retrieved 720 of them. So when they come and tell you about jobs, Joe, please ask them how. There's nothing wrong with our country. Let me say that again and again and again. There's nothing wrong with our country. But there's a lot wrong with the choices that we have made. Now, at one time, we were owing foreigners. It wasn't so. There was a debt. So just imagine that you were owing your, child, your bank and the roof of your house had been blown away by storm. And you had a choice to make. To roof your house and provide shelter for your family or pay your creditors. What would you do? Hello? We made a choice here to pay foreign creditors first. We paid $12 billion out in 2005 in order to get debt forgiveness of $19 billion and only to go and borrow more. So by the time Buhari came, Nigeria was in debt again of $60 billion. And you didn't have infrastructure. So if that infrastructure, $12 billion, had been used to build rail, to build power, to build bridges, these businesses would have done better. Those were the choices we made. So leave the colors, leave the candidates, look at the choices they are presenting to you. Now, at the time, too, we made a choice to import rice, to import sugar, and to import milk and fish. So if you look in central bank's published reports, you will see that we used to import one billion plus dollars annually of rice. One billion dollars worth of rice annually. Meanwhile, we can plant rice in Kedi, in Ebony, in Lagos, in Niger, in Egua, 
in our father. But a group of people made a choice to say, let us import it. Is that how to create jobs? Who are the ones benefiting? Thailand, Taiwan, Vietnam, those were their farmers. So let us not moan about jobs. Let us look critically at the choices we have made. And we made the same choice for fish, and we made the same choice for sugar, where we have sugar cane. But you know what? President Buhari said, we will produce our own food. And from one billion dollars a year worth of import of rice, the import bill as released by Central Bank for rice has dropped as of last year to 18 million dollars from 1 billion dollars. <laughs> from 900 plus million dollars for sugar and 900 plus million dollars for fish. The import bill for sugar dropped to $300 million, and the one for fish dropped to $17 million. <laughs> that is the choice we have made, that the opportunities to provide sugar represents opportunities for employment here. The opportunity to grow rice represents opportunities for employment here. And the opportunity to provide to fish represents opportunities for employment here. So those are the choices. As you go out to make, to cast your vote, choose the one that you want. If you want to go back to importation, it is your choice. But let me remind you that at the time we were making those not well thought out policies, oil was trading at 140. It is now half or less than half the price. So if we had not stopped, would we have been able to pay? Think about it. Now, also, where are the jobs? In 2010, I think it was, about 300 people, 300 people had difficult business terrain. They were owing Nigeria's banks about $5 trillion. 300 Nigerians. And it was a government decision to say, all right, in order that you don't bring down the banking system, we will bail you out. So 300 people got 5 trillion naira. Essentially, that's what we handed them. That was a choice. But what were the consequences for that support? Really no consequences. And they have continued to behave the same way. There's nothing wrong with supporting them so that they, they don't bring all of us down. But you remember when Barack Obama did the same thing to save the auto industry? You remember what he did to them? They flew to Washington, said, go back and drive like ordinary people and come and show that you have learned your lesson. You remember that? But our people didn't do that here. It's business as usual. So Buhari government now says, okay, some people have been supported at the top. What about those at the base of the pyramid? So let's start a social intervention fund. You know, there is poverty in every part of the world. Though. Whether it is extensive or not extensive, it's a question of what you do about it. But if you do nothing about it, it will get worse. So, and they decided, okay, people who are out of school, let us start a program, Empower. Children who are malnourished, let us start a school feeding program. So, nine million children get fed every day. I hear the argument, the quality of the food is not good. You go and tell the children. If you have woken up in the morning and there is no food, not even Gary, you go and tell them that the quality is not good. And go and tell their parents. Oh yes, there's always room for improvement in everything. 
But one government said, we will not turn our eyes away from the people at the bottom of the pyramid. But you know what that does? It creates a linkage support for farmers, eggs, rice, banana, and so on and so forth. That is how an economy should work. Everybody contributing and producing.